and welcome to the first lecture of requirements engineering in the upcoming winter semester. This is going to be a special lecture because you can watch us online via a big blue button, but we'll also have special lecture content for you that is hopefully less boring and adds a little bit of quality to this lecture. What we're going to do today is go through all the relevant org issues or things that might be relevant for you. And then next week, we'll start covering some actual content. So let's get started. Who are we? Um, I know I have a beard now. I look a little bit different than the picture that you have in front of you. Um, I'm Benjamin. I'm running the group for sustainability and computer science here at the university, also more prominently known as the Emerging Technology for the Circular Economy Lab. Um, I have with me here Anant, who will introduce himself. Uh, hi, I'm Anant. I hope you can hear me. Um, so essentially, I finished my master's a few years ago from Uni Göttingen, and then I started working here in the EDCE lab um, doing research in sustainability, also starting my PhD. Um, well, I already started my PhD very recently, and I'm going to be working on um, I think I'm giving you, giving at least one lecture and also working on the back end with exercises and supporting the lecture content. Looking forward to, um, all of your exercises. Uh, I guess over to Nisha, if she can. Introduce yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Nisha Mutaraju. I'm currently doing my master's here in uh, informatics at TU Clausewitz. Uh, I'm also working as HEV in Requirements Engineering. Uh, I'm here to help you guys in case if you have any questions regarding exercise or the lecture. Yeah. And I have met the whole team. That's a weird sound in the background, but I guess now it's gone. So that's our team, me, Anand, and Nisha. So if there are any problems, we are the three contact people that you can ask questions or who can help you with the knowledge that we're trying to teach you. And then moving on to what's our research group. I already introduced this very briefly, like the Emerging Technologies for a Circular Economy group. Um, the very simplified version of what we do is we're taking IT and computer science on one side and trying to match it with sustainability. So how can IT or computer science help to make this a more sustainable and better uh, planet? Sometimes the answer is by just pulling the plug and not doing any of the stuff that we do right now, like huge as AI models or something like that. Um, other times the answer to that question is slightly more complicated, uh, but this is not going to be an advertisement or marketing session for our group. This is just a simple uh, summary of what we do. And of course, we're also working on the overarching theme of Theo Klausthal, the circular economy, but we also go uh, beyond the circular economy, because the circular economy is also not perfect. Teaser for one of our other lectures. And look at concepts like circular societies, self-organized and decentralized systems. How can groups govern themselves? And we also have a some kind of a pet project research direction where we are concerned with uh, localized and resilient food production that helps us to adapt to climate change, environment pollution, and other challenges of the current century. But that essentially means that usually there's always at least one research project that our groups run, group runs, where you can grab some food. So we've done mushrooms that we gourmet mushrooms that we uh, monitored in the past to build an AI system to detect when they are ready to be harvested. Um, we right now have vertical farming systems here. We have a farm bot that will be set up in a greenhouse very soon. So usually there's always something to eat when you join our group. And our group is not only offering the requirements engineering course. This semester, we are also offering the limits to growth course, sustainability and the circular economy, a course that is open to everyone. And I mean that literally. So it doesn't matter if you're studying philosophy, computer science, chemistry, or if you're not studying at all, you can join that course, participate, and learn all the basics and all the foundations of sustainability and the upcoming challenges for the 21st century and what we can do. So this course is really open for everyone. 
And in the next semester, in summer semester, we also have our Emerging Technologies for the Circular Economy course, which is at the intersection of sustainability and computer science. But we'll introduce that course in more detail next semester. So that's our group. There are a few more members to that group, but it doesn't make sense to introduce all of them right now. But now you have an idea of what we do and what other courses we teach besides requirements engineering. You can get more information on our website. There you'll have links to all our courses that we offer and to the course materials because we publish all the stuff that we do online. So you'll find all the slides there, all the exercises there, all the videos there, all the source materials. You can get all the stuff there. You find also thesis and project topics. So if you need to do bachelor thesis, master thesis, research track, bachelor project, master project, seminar project, you can go on our website. You will find all available topics there, but you will also find a counter that indicates how many available supervision slots we have. Right now, I think there are a few slots left, but once the counter is zero, you don't have to contact us. So please check before contacting us. And also, very important, please check the instructions on the website because we get so many requests. If someone doesn't follow the instructions, we just simply don't reply because there are so many requests. And uh, besides that, you will also find information about research projects that we do if we have any openings for HEVI or PhD positions. And the other two links will provide you a little bit of video material that somehow evolves around topics that our group does, even though they're already quite some, like a little bit older, I think like two or three years old. Now, coming to this particular course the requirements engineering course for the computer science students in bachelor and master. What are we going to tackle in this course? First, we're going to look at the core terminology and trying to understand what are the core tasks of requirements and what is requirements engineering in the first uh, place. Then we're going to look at the whole process of requirements engineering, like what are the different steps. And as part of those different steps, we'll have a look at so-called elicitation techniques. Once we elicited requirements, we'll think about how to properly document them, and we'll spend an awful lot of time on those documentation methods. They could be textual, they could be model-based, there could be formal ways to do so. But then we'll also look at things that the potential requirements engineer in the future to deal with your customers, with your clients, like negotiating requirements, because there could be conflicting requirements. One stakeholder in your project would like to have a blue PC or a blue front end. The other one says, no, blue is outdated. I want something green because green is the color of the TO Klaus and this is the most beautiful color you can get. How do you find a compromise between those? Or are there other options besides compromises? Then we'll also look at, have a look at requirements management and traceability, and we'll also discuss how you can validate requirements and how you can do quality assurance on requirements. It's not a problem if all of those terms don't ring a bell. That's the point of this course. We want to teach you uh, all this stuff. And some of those topics will maybe are not as sexy as, I don't know, the most recent things you can do with AI or playing around with actual robots. Can you hear us again? Yeah, okay, so there was a short loss of audio. Um, they are not the most, might not be the most sexy things that you can study, but they are definitely among those things that you will have to use for the rest of your life as a computer scientist. Because requirements engineering is actually not only something that you do for each and every IT project that you will be involved with, but also in your personal life. Because requirements engineering is simply what you also do when you look for a new apartment or for a new car. What are the requirements that you have for this project of a new car? You have that budget. You have maybe the need for only two seats because you're still single, no children, nothing else. Or you already have a wife or a husband and two children, five dogs, and you also need to transport a lot of food. So you get the idea that we're not just something that is related to this particular course and computer science, but also something that you do uh, in your everyday life. What are you supposed to take away from this course? I mean, 
in perfect sense, you have learned all the course content. But more specifically, of course, you should uh, be familiar with all the core terminology, the core tasks of requirements engineering. You should understand the whole project and each and every sub-step of it. And you should be able to choose, justify, and apply appropriate methods and techniques for elicitation, for documentation, for negotiation, for managing requirements. We'll have a look at a lot of those things. So essentially, you should just be a perfect requirements engineer once you're done with this course. The course is modeled and built based on the book Requirements Engineering Fundamentals, Principles and Techniques from Klaus Pohl and also utilizes materials by previous professors, Stefan Herbel, Stan Bartel, who provided valuable input to us or made things available to us that we could use for this course. So thanks a lot to those two in particular. And we'll also provide you a little bit more literature at the end so that if you're interested or if you would like to dig a little bit deeper into some of the topics that we uh, introduce here, then you can first go to that book. Maybe that book also explains certain things better than we do. And if you would like to get more stuff, there will be a slide with additional literature at the end of the session. So what we have next, lectures today, 30th of December, uh, not December, October. We start with the org stuff. And the location is here in GoTech in Goslar. So you can always join us here if uh, indicated that we will be here at GoTech. Um, we'll come to the second part of the location's MOOC stuff in a second. Today, only ORC. And then starting from next week, we'll start with the introduction to requirements engineering. From there on, slowly but surely building towards uh, the more interesting things. And now coming to this MOOC thing that is indicated as location, what does MOOC mean? M-O-O-C. It means Massive Open Online Course. You might have seen things like Udacity, Coursera, EDX, or other courses at Stanford and Harvard teach online, where you have short series of lecture material, some of them just like one or two minutes long, others 10 to 15 or something in between. And after each lecture piece, there is additional information or material provided and if it's a coding MOOC, then you have to do some small coding tasks. If it's another topic, then there's maybe something like a multiple choice quiz at the end or another task that you can to check whether you understood what you were just taught. And we are not quite at the level of Coursera or EDX yet, but we're working in that direction. And in order to do that, we spent an awful lot of time in the past few weeks and months of recording a large chunk of videos that are separated into smaller learning sections and added them to our special purpose website that we already posted to you on StudIP, but that you will also find if you go to our website, click on courses, requirements, engineering, and click on the link. I think it says more or so, then you will be brought to our website, re for requirements engineering dot etce minus lab dot de. I think Anand could probably put that in the chat right now. Um, so that you don't have to listen to that. Um, I'm just repeating it for everyone uh, who's listening. re.etce-lab.de and they will find all information, but the link is also listed on StudIP. And there we will make available the different lecture contents for this course. That means that you can do the lecture whenever you like, but we'll make them available at latest on the 6th of November. Most of the course content will already be available ahead of time, like weeks or days ahead of time. So you can decide when you want to tackle that course content. But the exercise and Q&A session will be always on Mondays from 4 to 5 p.m. online via BBB. So you can do the content whenever you want, but the exercises and the Q&A session will be uh, bound to the Monday time slot 4 to 5 p.m. by our BBB. The link is on StudIP. And next week, we're supposed to start with the introduction content. It means you go to the website and click on the introduction content. Quite simple. 
And then the next week afterwards, you will do the system context and boundaries and types of requirement and so on and so on and so on. So you can decide whether you want to do everything at once or after some time. I think Anand just posted the link. Have a look at the website and that's it. We also post matching exercises for some of the lecture content. So for example, in the second week, we'll upload or enable the multiple choice uh, quiz for the initial knowledge test. And 27th of November, you will get um, exercises that are related or starting to do like elicitation related exercises. So those match lecture week number four and five, where we do elicitation tasks. And when we do that, you get the exercises for those particular tasks. Please note that there is a submission deadline for all the exercises, and we'll discuss exercise requirements in a second. We will have nine exercises. Eight of them are mandatory. There will be one bonus task, but we'll get to that in a second. So all of what I just said, summarized here, and a little bit of extra information. So once more, the link that you need for the asynchronous learning content. And the slides will be available via GitHub. The link is listed there. You will always find the latest version of the slides on GitHub because we're updating them constantly. We just found <laughs> a style or some kind of formatting issue uh, on this slide before we started. So we'll definitely update the slides today because you can see that there are some unnecessary bullet points here in this slide. So we already prepared an updated version of the slide and we'll push them again to GitHub. So always the most recent stuff is on GitHub. That's why we also don't publish anything on StudIP. There's always everything on GitHub with respect to slides. When you look at the pre-produced MOOC content, you'll notice that the slides look slightly different, uh, but the content will be the same. So the slides, the full screen slides that we provide you here and that you can see now, are or should be more or less identical with the ones that you see in the video. We just had to crop them so that there is me in the video or a month in the video and the slide content next to it. So they look different, but they should be the same. So this is where you get the material, either on the MOOC website and or on the GitHub page. Exercise and Q&A session will be uh, via BBB. I already said that. The exercise time slot is always the same. An exercise time slot doesn't mean that we will tell you the solution to the exercise. This is a session where we can talk about the exercise and where Nisha will help you to identify the most common mistakes if we figure out like everyone misunderstood the certain elicitation technique and we will like communicate that knowledge. But otherwise it's supposed to be sessions where you can ask questions, where you can request things like additional exercise or additional examples to better understand the content of the lecture. And we would also like to receive feedback on what you think about the MOOC stuff. Like, is it incomprehensible? Is there a need to add extra material? Um, does it help you? Or is it a style of teaching that yeah, makes you hate university or love university? So we're looking forward to all the positive but also critical feedback that we could incorporate in this course because you are our guinea pigs. There were some elements of this MOOC style in our other sustainability lecture, but we didn't get that far yet. So you are among the first people here at the University of Klaustal to have this experience. Finally, if you have any questions, please write to this very specific email address listed here. We will only respond to that email uh, to emails written to that email address because there are three lecturers or at least three people involved in this course. If you write the same email to all three of us, then three of us will be busy or kept busy with the same question. While this spe special purpose email address, everyone can access and we can answer all of your questions more efficiently. And we also know which questions haven't been answered yet without wasting any time. So if you have a question, use that email address everything else will be ignored. If you do not get a response from us, you use the wrong email address. Very simple. So when are the lecture dates and time? Uh, very simple. The official date and time is Monday 2.15 to 3.45. 
for the lecture. Uh, as we just highlighted, most of the stuff will be MOOC content, so you don't have to come here. We won't be here for all the lectures where MOOC is listed as location. But we will be there every Monday from 4 to 5 p.m. Berlin time for the big blue button sessions for Q&A and exercises. Here's another mistake that I already corrected in another slide. We won't have a exercise and Q&A session today because there are no things to exercise or to clarify. If there are any like questions at the end of the session, we will stop the recording and then you can ask them live. Um, but we won't have a specific Q&A session today because no lecture content besides all the org stuff. The exercises will be organized by Anand and Nisha, and I will just try to now transfer or like give you all the information, and then Anand will either not or add further information that I might be missing. So first of all, all exercises are individual work. No group submissions, no doing stuff together. Um, there might be multiple choice questions or practical tasks, like we're giving you scenarios and then you should elicit requirements or document requirements or do something practical. Usually you have seven to 14 days to submit an exercise. If there are some like holidays in between, then you might have a little bit more time, um, but usually it's seven to 14 days. There is not an exercise every week, if you have seen in the exercise schedule, because we have way more lectures than exercises. And the submission deadline is always Mondays at 1.59 p.m., right before the next lecture period. And the submission of each exercise is mandatory. You have to submit each and every exercise. No discussions. There are not so many. So um, how do you submit exercises? The multiple choice exercises are quite simple, and you get immediate feedback because they are self-evaluating on the MOOC website. So when you do the MOOC stuff, then you can go straight to the multiple choice quizzes and you get immediate feedback. All the practical tasks will be submitted via Moodle and Anand already prepared, if I'm not mistaken, a submission thingy thing there. Maybe not, but uh, once the first practical task uh, is due, you will find a way to submit the exercises via Moodle. Moodle will also make sure that all of your exercises are submitted correctly. So if Moodle says you submitted, congratulations. If Moodle says no, then you probably did not submit correctly. Bonus task is not mandatory. It's essentially an extra chance for you to make up for any of the other exercises where you might fail or miss one, like you might be sick or there might be a good other reason why you missed it. Um, if you're sick, you don't need to do the bonus task anyway. If you get a doctor's note, you're fine. But let's say, I don't know, you missed it because you spent too much time partying uh, or you fail it, meaning you did not get enough points. Then you can do the bonus task to make up for one missed or failed exercise. One. But please, 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 please don't. Don't plan to use this extra Thing and just failed something on purpose or missed something on purpose um, because the bonus task will be rather difficult. We haven't fully decided yet what's going to be. It's not going to be the same, obviously, as last year, um, but it's not going to be a nice task because we do not want to incentivize you to be lazy on purpose or to miss something on purpose. All the other tasks should be rather simple and nice and you should be able to enjoy them. The bonus task, yeah, we'll see. Uh, usually we have an interest in you not failing, and we also would be very happy if someone passes the bonus task, but it's difficult on purpose. The examination uh, will be um, in March 2024, more precisely on 4th of March, and it will be a written exam online from 2 to 4 p.m., we will send further notifications and information uh, to you ahead of time. But this is like what we're planning for right now. And in order to be eligible to participate in the exam, you have to fulfill all the uh, criteria listed here. So you have to pass each and every exercise with a score of 50% of more. 
and you have to submit every exercise. You might fail one exercise and then um, get the bonus task, but 50% or more. And if you fail or miss one, then you have to do the bonus task and get 50% or more in the bonus task. So not that difficult, uh, straightforward rules and no discussions about those rules. Um, doctor's notes or death certificates are the only reasons um, that would grant you an exception from those rules. There is some extra content that has a special green star, I think at the right top corner, if I'm not mistaken. This is the so-called self-study star. There is a lot of extra content that we would like to, or that, that where we think this is helpful for your future career in computer science and project management and requirements engineering, but we don't want to make it mandatory um, with respect to the examination, but it can be very helpful for you. So we just provide you the material and then you can decide whether you would like to dig deeper into that or not. Extra knowledge, self-study knowledge is not part of the examination, but it helps, could get you some extra points. And the promised literature. So first of all, Paul's book about requirements engineering, which is the foundation of this course, but then also uh, additional literature that you can find online or just buy, some of them in German, some of them in English, uh, depending on what suits you best. Very important, you don't have to buy the book to pass the exam. This is just extra knowledge. You will be able to pass the exam with just the information and material that we provide to you. Video, slides, exercises. You don't need more. That should be enough to pass, but there is extra material available.